today we're going to focus on one of the most overlooked aspects of BJJ training, which is starting from the ground or the kneeling position and how to take an opponent down from there. And before we even look at how to take them to their back or get them knocked over, let's look at what you should be doing with your own body. And the first thing I want to tell you is, even though we start from the knees position, you hardly ever want to start like this on both knees. That's not a very good position. It's moderately stable, but there's not really much you can do from here and it is vulnerable to a particular attack. So just get that out of your mind. You're never going to start from here. Instead, most of the time you'll be working with what's known as combat base. Some people call it the samurai position. Notice I'm sitting on one heel. Another important thing to notice about this position as well is that my chest is always in front of my hips. So now this is no good. My chest is over my hips and this is even worse. My chest is behind my hips. My chest to be in front of my hips. What this does is it gives me a stable position so that when Kev tries to knock me back here, I can meet any forwards pressure from him and keep my balance. It's the opposite if I'm leaning back with my head and chest over my hips. If Kev pushes me now, I'm going to fall very easily. The next thing to consider in this position is grips. It's just like standing, standing fighting in judo. I don't want him to take a grip on me because if he gets a grip, he's one step ahead of me. So from here, very important, I see even high level guys making that mistake, they'll let someone just take a grip on them. Instead, try to grip fight from here. I'm looking to get grips of my own and prevent him from taking grips. That's very, very important. Another thing to keep in mind is the foot, the lead foot is a vulnerability in the combat base position. Kev can just reach down, grab that foot and take me down. So I keep in mind when I'm in combat base that this is the vulnerable foot, this is the one that can be attacked. So I'm always monitoring it, being aware if he goes for it, I can block and defend against it. So once you have all those details in place, position of your hips and head, sitting on your heels, <clears throat> being very aware of the grip game, that's when you're ready to attack. So let's look at, first off, what Kev's doing and how to counter that. If Kev is in that position, that I mentioned to you, which is on both knees like this, it's very, very easy to take him down. One very, very simple technique that I use over and over again, which is just to drive my head into Kevin's chest and knock him backwards, at the same time grabbing his knees. So if Kev is fighting like that with me, the first thing I'm going to do is grab his knees, put my head here, and just drive backwards. And he will fall every single time because he is not set up <clears throat> to fall backwards safely, his legs are going to bend, his spine's going to bend, it's very uncomfortable here. That's why I mentioned to you earlier to have the combat base because if Kev pushes me back now, I naturally fall into a good guard position as my leg is tucked under me. But here, no way, this is really vulnerable. You can feel Kev as you're like that. If I grab your knees and I hit you here, boom, and I drive back, there's not really much you can do. In fact, this is so powerful, you can injure your opponent if you do it too quickly, so be careful, you don't want to <clears throat> damage his knees or his ankles, but keep in mind that that's always an option if he sits with his knees square, right? Grab his knees, head in his chest, and drive back to take him down. If, however, Kev is a slightly better fighter and he's in the combat base position, this is where it gets interesting, there's a bunch of cool takedowns to use. My favorite one of all is just the straight up ankle pick. And the way I do that is I misdirect him using my hands. If I just look at his foot and reach for it, he's going to know something's up and he's going to defend. So usually what I'll do is I'll fake by lifting this hand high, right, and pretend I'm reaching for his shoulder or his sleeve. And as I do that, I change to grab his ankle and I grab here on his shoulder, sometimes with a grip on the collar, doesn't really matter as long as this hand is controlling or attacking high. So one hand is attacking low and one hand is attacking high. And the way I complete that is here, fake, grab, and push back to take him down. Looks so simple, but you'd be amazed at how many guys you're going to take down with this little technique. So let's watch again. In this position, I see his vulnerable foot. That's the one I'm going to attack. Instead of just reaching for it, I fake high. Grab low and the other hand comes over. Now I'm going to pull 
and push to take him down. <clears throat> the second attack I use with great success is <clears throat> from combat base. If he's too wise to allow me to grab that foot, I'm going to start looking to attack to the other side. And the way I'm going to do that is to get grips on the same side as the knee that's on the floor. I take one grip over here. It's really good, especially if he's controlling first, then I just hold somewhere here. And the second grip I hold at his collar. Now, the reason I use it on this side is because trying to go this way will not work because this leg is basing and will stop Kev from being taken down. This way, however, there's a hole where I can take him into because he's sitting on that leg, it's committed. He cannot step it up to defend. And what I'm going to do now, guys, is just tip him into that diagonal quadrant there behind him. And the way I do that is a shake. I pull this wrist in and I pull his shoulder down and I tip. And he falls into that quadrant. So between those three takedowns or those three attacks, you have a much greater chance of taking a person down from the knees position.